earliest memory of the Seattle Festival was actually when I was at school. Um, me and my mate Barry Ivans, we, we stormed out of German class with about 10 minutes to go so we could go listen to Boa Hulab winning the Gold Cup. I did have a really decent bet on um, Oiseau de Nuit for the Grand Annual um, a few years ago. I can't remember what year that is now, but that was 40 to 1. I love backing big prize horses and when they win it's fantastic. Yeah. It has to be next sensation in the Grand Annual a few years ago. I had backed it in doubles with so many different horses because I thought it was a certainty to win the race. And when they went going, he just tore off and he was 20 lengths clear down the back. He ended up finishing fourth the following year. Next sensation bolted up in the very same race at 16 to 1 and I'd had a pathetic bet by comparison. So yeah, that really hurt, hurt twice. Well, one thing I never do is I never ever make notes. Um, I haven't done so. I always try and look at things again and again and again. Well, because I think once you start making notes, you, you convince yourself about something and you make yourself lazy. I, I love tipping winners. I, you know, the feeling that you know some people might have actually made some money out of it. Of course, when I'm wrong, I hope they've come to another idea altogether. I think every, I think everything's a potential weapon. You've got to look at everything: trainer form, horse form, course form. Uh, that'd be Rooster Brewster's champion hurdle. Um, I, I remember telling everybody it was a good thing, and I kept forgetting to back him. And he was 40 to one at the at the start of the season. And then he was suddenly he was 20s, he was 16s, and he went off nine to two, and he absolutely bolted up, going head down. <laughs> I think, I think uh, you know, I think most people will anyway. I mean, especially with all the boozers uh, that will be drunk there. But you know, don't be afraid of the price. I do want to see Sam Crow, uh, who's obviously favourite for the Ballymore. Um, and I want to see the match-up between Altior, Duvan and, and Min. I'd love to see both of them take on Altior and, and come out with a real champion. Right, yeah, well, it depends on how long, it depends on how long you're going to go for. But if you go in there for four days, don't ruin it on the first day by getting too wasted because you're going to be, you're going to be in a fuzz for the, for the other three. It's very easy to do because you get carried away in the, in the atmosphere. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of punting to do. And, you know, don't blow the stack in the first day either. Yeah, Nat for the festival was far class in the Triumph Hurdle. I think the uh, Spring Juvenile Hurdle at the Dublin Festival was by far the best bit of form. I know he was second, but the jockey wasn't happy with the fact that the favourite dropped in a hole too soon and he found himself in front. I think six or seven lengths faster than Sam Crow from two out to the line. It tells me that's a top class bit of juvenile form. And I think far class being flatbread will appreciate better ground, stronger run race, and I can't see him being out of front. Actually, far class would be the, the best value bet, but um, I've come around to call it mad if it runs in the Albert Bartlett. You need, you need a horse with experience in that race. In the average number of runners over the 13 years is, is, is almost 10 runs before you get to, before you get to the festival. So I go with Khaled Mad. He, he ran at the festival last year in the, in the National Hunt Chase, believe it or not. Had some good chase form, just had a wind operation, bolted up in a Potemps qualifier. That's my only worry. You've got to back him non-runner, no bet, because he's in the Potemps final as well. Guinness. Mullins. Each way. Jumps. Brilliant. Movie Wars. Close Brothers Novice Handicap Chase. Over there. Island. Ken.